Hello, and welcome to Up to Speed with Online Teaching. My name is Jonathan Haber. In this short course on creating effective assessments and assignments for online courses, this video is going to focus on the subject of assessment planning. Now, if you recall, this course is based on the backwards design process, which is a process used by professional test developers and many educators to create effective assessments and assignments for any teaching environment, in classroom, online, anywhere. And it involves a set of discrete steps, the first one being goal setting, which you learned about in a previous video, and the step we're going to be covering in this lesson, which is assessment planning. Now, assessment planning usually begins with a set of documents, beginning with an assessment blueprint. An assessment blueprint contains all information about content, all content broken down into discrete learning objectives, also sometimes referred to as learning outcomes. These learning outcomes are organized into an outline or some similar structure. And while a blueprint is similar to curriculum, its focus is on objectives that are both teachable and measurable. Okay, let me show you a couple examples. Uh, for starters, here is a certification blueprint. This is a blueprint from a professional certification. It goes on for many, many pages. It's extremely detailed. It's designed to express extremely clearly what you're measuring in the test. And at the end of this at the page, at the bottom of the page, you can see learning objectives that are broken down uh, very discreetly, individual, individual items, each of which can be taught and evaluated. Now, you don't have to go this far in your courses, but uh, here's an example from a college course on Chinese history. And again, you can see it's broken down into a somewhat simpler outline, but it's still an outline where every item in it is teachable and measurable. Okay, so I've talked a bit about learning objectives. So uh, let's get into what goes into a good learning objective. What are the rules for writing good learning objectives? Okay, well, for starters, uh, each learning objective should focus on a single piece of content or a de demonstrable skill. Okay, if you have a test question that's covering two learning objectives, for example, uh, then you don't know whether uh, somebody who got the question wrong did so because they didn't know one learning objective or the other. Now, these learning objectives could cover complex material, so this doesn't mean everything needs to be broken down to the lowest common denominator. But think in terms of the nature of your assessment, writing objectives that will give you the chance to be able to pick out what somebody did right or wrong based on how well they did on an assessment or an assignment. Okay, I mentioned before that these objectives should be both teachable and measurable. Uh, many academic standards are developed by educators uh, who are very thoughtfully put them together with teaching in mind. And that's understandable, but what often ends up happening is the standards that can then get handed to somebody else, often a professional testing organization, in order to create a standardized test on a document that may not have been considering measurability when those academic standards were designed. So in your case, it's usually the case that if you put enough effort into it, you can come up with learning objectives that are both teachable and measurable, and I strongly recommend you do so to create a more effective course design as well as assessment design. Uh, good learning objectives should start with an action verb, such as identify or describe for knowledge, knowledge objectives, or perform or create for skills objectives. And you should avoid starting an objective with vaguer terms, such as understand or experience, which are hard to measure or cannot be both taught and evaluated. Okay, and let me give you a few examples of learning objectives. Uh, here's one that meets these criteria. Identify reasons why the way the First World War ended led to the Second World War. Okay, this begins with an action verb, identify. It's a knowledge objective. And I think it's, you could probably come up with different ways you can measure this objective through different sorts of uh, test questions or writing assignments. Uh, here is more of a performance-based objective. Write a paragraph in which there's no problems with subject-verb agreement. Okay, here it's very clear what they have to do. They have to write a paragraph, and it's very clear what they need to do in that paragraph. They have to make sure there are no issues with subject-verb agreement. This is a performance-based learning objective. Here's another performance-based learning objective. Use Microsoft Excel to determine the mean, mode, and median for a set of numbers. Okay, here's something where someone has to use a an application, Microsoft Excel, to perform a task, and it begins with the action verb use. Uh, here's another knowledge-based objective that uh, I would use or will use when I create assessments to go with this course. Identify the steps in the backward design process in the correct sequence. Okay, this is a knowledge objective. 
And this is one that I will use to help guide my own test development process. Okay, now in addition to a blueprint, I think I mentioned there is more than one document you want to create. Um, the second document is what I call a design document. And this contains all non-content specifications in the test. Everything having to do not with content that's covered in the blueprint, but with other aspects of the test, such as the test length, the item style. Is it going to be auto-graded, linear items? We'll be covering linear items in the next lesson. Is it going to be performance-based and rubric scored? Topics we'll be covering in the lessons after that. What's the grading system? Is it going to be pass-fail, A through F? What's the method of delivery? Many of you are probably thinking about online, but there's also uh, written assessments, proctored versus non-proctored assessments for more high-stakes exam, etc. All this information goes into the design document. Uh, and here's an example, right? Let's say uh, you're designing an online course, and the course is going to be based on uh, a set of quizzes that are going to appear at the end of each lesson and a final exam. Well, here are the specifications for the quizzes. There are going to be five question quizzes covering material at the end of each lesson. They're going to be automatically scored with linear items. Uh, there's going to be one try per question, and all the quizzes taken together are going to provide 50% of the overall grade. Uh, also, there's a final exam, which is going to be a writing assignment. In this case, an argumentative writing assignment on an historic event. Uh, it's going to be submitted via learning management system and teacher graded, and this is going to cover the other 50% of the grade. Okay, so these are all the non-content specifications for all the assessments that are going to be in your course. Uh, here's another uh, example of specifications. In this case, for this course, like I said, I will eventually get around to creating some quizzes that will go at the end of each lesson. I want these quizzes to each have three to five questions covering material, and I want them to be available at the end of each video. Uh, the assessments are going to be optional because I don't know where and how these videos might get shared. So I need to make sure that the videos are uh, not something required to, uh, or the quizzes are something not acquired, required to um, learn the content in the videos. But they will be automatically scored. I will use linear item types. Uh, in this case, I would like to create them with two tries per question and provide remediation at the end of each question, which means these assessments would also be kind of learning experiences, formative learning experiences. Okay, so now that we've covered uh, the planning process, we're going to move on to content creation, starting with the creation of linear test items.